Okay, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure to welcome you to this uh, first session here in the Duna room. The topic is a spotlight on current offerings by training institutions. You see here uh, representatives of the training institutions. And they will give you a really brief, really like a spotlight on what they're doing and what they think is their highlight. And after that, we will have a time for questions from, uh, that are coming from you. There is some general information that I would like to, to give you right now, so we don't forget. There is um, in the afternoon at uh, half past two, there is another session of training institution that will be in the other room that will have more of a focus on uh, humanitarian aid. And um, at 20 past 12, we have a visual recorder. At 20 past 12, he will have a first presentation up in the bar area. And it's really worth going because he has a really nice way of grasping what's going on and then uh, doing a 10 minute presentation is really refreshing. So I highly recommend this. And generally, all the sessions are recorded. So if you don't manage to, to be somewhere, um, don't worry, it will be online as of the beginning of next uh, week. Take your time to visit the stands. Make sure you spend time with the personal encounters and um, uh, you can watch what you don't manage to see now. You can watch online. Um, maybe you realize there are some rest islands out there in the hallway. There are different topics like on safety, on water and women, on uh, SDGs. So if you're tired from the talking and listening, um, there are some armchairs where you can rest and maybe indulge in a topic that you normally don't indulge to. Um, yes, that's more or less it. You see a hashtag if you wish to uh, post something, that's always very welcome. And um, at the end of the day, there will be some questionnaires where we will hope, uh, gladly take your feedback. Um, and uh, it's great if you give us your opinion, then we can shape the program accordingly <laughs> next time. So with this, um, I would like to welcome the five people that are here with us. Um, maybe you can <laughs> show the public who it is. One person is missing yet. But you have uh, Marie-Laure Müller from uh, Nadel. Then you have um, Dominique Gönna from Haffel. You have the next person is uh, Edith Favoreux from uh, Serra. Then you have Florina Derungs from the Center for Gender Studies. And finally, you see Raphael Safran from the Graduate Institute. I will now give the word to each of them for a very brief uh, moment of telling you what is their speciality in terms of the trainings, trainings that they offer. Please, Marie-Laure. <laughs> okay, is it on? Yes. Yeah, okay. So, uh, welcome everyone. My name is Marilo Müller. I'm from NADEL. Um, that's an acronym for in German Nachdiplomstudium für Entwicklungsländer. Now, um, as everything is in English, it's called Center for Development and Cooperation. We are part of ETHZ, which is the federal Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Zurich. So um, we have two programs, one for the so-called beginners, which is a postgraduate, it's a master of advanced studies. And uh, it's divided into three parts. We have a study semester where we cover different topics such as environment and resources, cultural and social aspects of development, uh, development economics, sanitation, water. So you see our program is quite broad. Afterwards, there is a so-called um, project assignment where our students will spend eight to ten months abroad. And after we return, they will be they are able to um, take part in so-called um, block seminars. These are blocks of three to five days to cer on, on certain topics. So um, these are the two main um, education or training programs that we offer, and um, I will pass on the mic to my colleague, Dominic. Thank you, Marilo. So my name is Dominic Gunnar. I'm the 
head of the group International Agriculture at the School of Agricultural, Forests and Food Sciences, which is part of the Bern University of Applied Sciences. So we are offering, uh, at the lower level, at the bachelor's level, we are offering a specific bachelor in International Agriculture and for, in, for us, the international is not the US or Australia, but it's developing and transition countries. So that's the focus of that bachelor study that includes a six-month field assignment abroad in the, in the last semester where the students do their bachelor thesis. So they do the field research and then they do their uh, bachelor thesis. And after the bachelor, there is a master's program which has a variety of uh, specializations. There is production systems, there is value chains uh, and rural development. Uh, there is also one in forestry. Um, and in these master programs, about half of the students do their master thesis abroad, again in developing or transition countries. So that's quite a, a big uh, offer especially at the master's level, the number of students we have, it's a relatively small number in the bachelor's, like 10 to 15 per year. And we could not afford to have 25 or 30 because of the costs of the uh, field assignment abroad. Um, and in the master program, we have about 100 students. Half of them are doing their research or their work in uh, the international context. Good morning, I'm Edith Favoureux, I'm from CERA. CERA is a center uh, of education and research on humanitarian action. It's a joint center between the Graduate Institute and the University of Geneva. Um, so we welcome professionals from all around the world, uh, pr professionals, fr uh, humanitarian actors, but also development actors or members of uh, civil society. Um, and. Um, we welcome them in order to strengthen their competencies in different areas regarding to humanitarian action. We are more than 24 different kind of programs and we also welcome beginners with a summer school, a two weeks um, intensive program in order to have an introduction on humanitarian action. I will come back on the different uh, types of program later on. Yes, good morning everybody. I'm happy to see so many faces in this room. My name is Florina Derongs. I work at the Center for Gender Studies of the University of Bern and I'm here to tell you about an offer, a CAS course, a Certificate of Advanced Studies course that we have that addresses gender issues in international cooperation. So it's a further education course. This means you need to have completed your master, so a bit different from what Dominic just said. It um, addresses professionals who have a gender focus in their work and who wish to improve their gender competi competences. So these are people that come work for the government or for an NGO in the field of education, water, sanitation, hygiene, in trade unions, etc. So we look at um, different topics with a gender lens. So we look at, for example, development. What are the gender perspectives in there? I will tell you later more a bit about this. We look at human rights, migration, work, justice, all these topics. We look at them with a gender lens. So it's important for people in working in international cooperation to have gender expertise. And we have a couple of renowned international and national experts who are lecturing in this course. It's a one-year course. It will start again in 2018. It's running at the moment and we have a biannual rhythm. This is why we don't have a stall upstairs. Um, it starts in 2018 again, so if you have questions, I'll be here later if you want to come and ask me some questions. And with this, I pass on to my colleague from the Graduate Institute. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Raphael Zafrin. I represent the Graduate Institute of International and Development Studies. Uh, we offer regular master's and PhD programs in both development studies and uh, international relations, international affairs. And we have also a uh, Department of Executive Education that focuses more on uh, programs for professionals. Uh, 
uh, for people who really have some some experience. So I think I'll focus more on um, on the one hand the uh, MA in development studies that we that we offer. Uh, we have excellent links uh, in Geneva with international organizations and what we call International Geneva, which includes a cert certain number of NGOs, um, you know, uh, so civil society organizations and international organizations, um, and. In terms of executive education, we have two programs that may, may be relevant uh, to you. One is on strategic management for development projects, uh, and the other one is the executive master in development policies and practices. Uh, they both have a different focus, uh, but uh, the, the second one uh, has an interesting dimension, which is that you spend some time in the field. Uh, we have different hubs across the world, so one of the modules takes place uh, either on the African continent or in Latin America or in Central Asia and Southeast Asia. So this is something that, that may be interesting for you because you combine both theoretical uh, in components but also very hands-on and sort of field experience. Uh, we have a, a stand uh, upstairs. Please feel free to come to ask me any questions or just check out what we have uh, there. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for this brief introduction. We have now someone else joining the group, please. This is uh, Lisa Isler. She is director of Sinfo. And she will, on behalf of, uh, or instead of uh, Frank Wittmann, introduce the training that Frank was uh, meant to introduce. She will give you a brief introduction to that, a very short other snapshot on another training option. Yes. So I'll briefly present you very briefly because I really uh, slipped in. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> the Frank is missing. Um, Sanfo is um, uh, doing a CIS, a Certificate of Advanced Studies in Leadership for in Development Cooperation. Um, we have it's the sec it's running now for the second time. Um, it's, it's basically about building up leadership skills for people who want to grow into uh, such a position in a, a development organization or in the humanitarian field. So um, there are about um, uh, 10 units, I don't know it by heart, <laughs> um, about yeah, a lot of leadership skills, I mean, it's about um, how to resources, how to build up resources, it's about team building, conflict management, but it's also about uh, strategic questions and um, how also how to position an organization um, in, this, um, in this context. Um, well, I'll leave it with that. If you, we have leaflets up in the, at, our, at the Sanfo stand, and there's also a person who has done the, this training, so um, she can give you more information. And also one of our, the, uh, the, the uh, main facilitator of Sanfo um, is here for all those who want to know more about it. Okay, thank you. Oops. Can I have Thank you. <laughs> Um, thank you very much for this overview. Um, now we would like to give some little space to each of the persons up here to highlight one thing that they think is particular or that they are proud of uh, when they think about their training offerings. And I don't know who wants to start. Marie-Laure. Okay, so you um. know the sequence. <laughs> Okay, I mentioned at the beginning that we offer two programs. One is also a certificate for advanced studies. Uh, this is addressed for so-called professionals who have already worked at least 24 years in international cooperation. But as I see so many young faces, I will concentrate on the master or advanced studies um, mentioned at the beginning. And the juicy part of this program is, because we're supposed to pick out juicy parts, and this is really the juicy part, is the second part which consists of, um, it is not a traineeship, it's a so-called project assignment of eight to ten months, which is conducted abroad in one ongoing project by an international or bilateral or non-governmental non organization. Many of them have stands up there and they, they go there, these students go there for eight to ten months with a certain specific task. So if you're an agronomist, we do something in the field of agronomy. And these um, assignments take place all over the world. 
Asia, Latin America, Africa, the Balkan, Central Asia. And this is a real first work experience that the people have. For that reason, this Mass of Advanced Studies is only offered 20, uh, every two years, and only 24, 24 people accept it. And so you can imagine that the training is really a very face-to-face, -face, really hands-on, very in a di dialogue um, way of, of teaching. It's really um, a cooperative, a cooperation kind of learning. So uh, we have a stand also up there. There are also some um, alumni um, roaming around Sanfo here, around the Sanfo Forum. So if you can identify them, um, I don't know how, but they will be able, yeah, there is one, you see, there is one Andrea, she um, did the Master of Advanced Studies, she had an uh, assignment in Peru, I remember very well. And uh, so if someone wants to ask Andrea what it was really about, not from my side, but from her side, probably she's well, uh, she will be happy to answer your questions. Thank you, Marilo. So what are we proud of at uh, Huffel? School of Agricultural, Forest and Food Sciences in Zollikofen. Um, well, it's very clear it's a practice orientation. We are a university of applied studies, so we are not doing theory for the sake of theory, and the research we are doing is applied research, and that is all the way down to the students. So the students, before they are admitted to our school in the bachelor program, they have to complete one year practical work on a farm in Switzerland. So that's the condition to be admitted in the bachelor program. And that gives them a real good uh, understanding of the practice uh, of the farmers in this country. And they have regular meetings in, at the college just to exchange experiences and then they can start their, their studies. And for those who choose to do international agriculture in the sixth semester, there is in the same country, so they may meet the same st the students from Nadel in the field assignment in the same countries, in the same regions, but they are at a lower level. So they could not be candidates in their program and they would not participate in our program. So we're not competing somehow. Not at all, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they do their field work for the bachelor thesis, so we assume that they collect good data from the field in an organization and the result of their, uh, of their bachelor thesis is useful for the host organization. So they are not just doing it for the sake of their own bachelor thesis, but they are doing it for, to answer relevant questions of development organizations. So that's at the end of the bachelor studies. And then after that in the master's program, it's more flexible. There is no more a six months time abroad, but depending on the needs, they will go for two months or three months, or they will go twice in a place to collect information and write their master thesis. And again, in the same countries as were mentioned before. So this is our special focus. It's this practice oriented uh, learning. And we also have a stand upstairs. So I will um, put emphasis on the individualization of our learning path, um, knowing that we have a very modular and flexible uh, training offer. Um, so we are in partnership with more than 60 uh, humanitarian organizations all around the world, and we welcome more than 150 um, professionals from the humanitarian sector and also academics specialized in humanitarian action. But what is is a really interesting us is you and first um, what we want to do with you it's better understand who you are and uh, where do you want to be and then we support you uh, to get there and if you are a professional from the humanitarian field or the development field and you want to strengthen your competencies, uh, we have a master program and also different uh, certificate of advanced studies uh, in health in emergency, people in ma management in humanitarian settings, uh, designing strategies and projects for humanitarian action, communication, advocacy, negotiation. So different types of specialities in order for you to strengthen your competencies. If you are a professional 
and that willing to move into the humanitarian sector, if you are a health uh, professional or working in HR in uh, some companies here in Switzerland, or if you are a communication officer in the private sector and you want to move into the, the humanitarian sector, you can also join uh, the all specialized programs. And if you are a beginner, uh, willing to know more about uh, humanitarian action. We also have short courses, very them uh, thematic short courses, for example, on project cycle management, on communication, on sexual violence. And uh, we have also a summer school, a two intensive week, in order for you to gain more knowledge about this complex uh, uh, sector um, and uh, the very volatile uh, context of operations and also to acquire some basic skills in order for you to better know where do you want to, to go. As we have seen in the previous uh, presentation this morning, um, we have different kind of organizations, different types of context, different sector of intervention. And it's very important for you to know where you feel that you, you can have a, the great added value based on who you are, what are your existing competencies, but also your, your dreams, etc. Because a career is based on some specific skills, soft skills, uh, behavior, etc. But it's also based on what you feel, what you have in, in, in you, in your your heart and it's very important to put everything together in order to have something that fit very well with you and also fit with the sector that is more and more complex. Thanks very much for this beautiful intervention, Edith. Me coming from a center for gender studies, you might imagine what my care, care business, uh, core business is, it's gender. So as I told you before, the CIS that we offer, it is for professionals with a gender focus in their work who wish to improve their gender competencies. Why are those gender competencies so important for international cooperation? As most of you might know, last September, so last year, the so-called 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development was um, adopted. There is even a rest area out here, I heard before, on this topic. Um, gender equality and women's empowerment is a key for achieving this agenda by 2030. As probably many of you might also know, there are still persisting gender inequalities in different fields like work, education, violence, political economic participation, the whole issue of unpaid care work, poverty, wearing a female face. So those gender inequalities that still persist are an obstacle to achieve this agenda. So staff in international cooperation needs to get co gender competences in order to make a contribution to, to achieve this agenda. So there are different ways um, what you can, like how you can intervene in a gender sensitive way. I either you do gender specific projects like working in the area of psychosocial support with survivors of violence, for example, or you try to integrate gender in a systematic um, way in all projects and in all um, stages of the project cycle management. So there are different tools around and exactly at those tools we look and we train the people in the course to look with a gender lens, with a gender perspective at different topics and to make this gender analysis. Thank you. So um, at the Graduate Institute, uh, as I mentioned, um, we have uh, uh, regular masters and PhD programs and executive education. In terms of the juicy part, uh, I'd like to focus uh, for uh, the regular programs on the fact that we have a number of internship and you know career opportunities that we we get through our career service center. That's very dynamic and that capitalizes on the the network we have in Geneva. 
Uh, we have a, a range of professional skills workshops as well that are offered to our, our regular master's students. And in terms of executive education, we really take pride in the fact that we put a lot, a lot of focus on uh, coaching, uh, mentoring. Uh, so the, the participants and the students really benefit from this tailored uh, approach, which sort of goes back to this approach to the individual as well, um, and which I feel is very important. I think you're right. Um, and um, and cross-cutting for the Graduate Institute, uh, the, the thing that, that I think we push really for is that because our professors conduct research on all of these global issues, development, international relations, uh, anthropology, students really benefit from the, the sort of latest trends and cutting edge knowledge uh, in this field. So this is really, I think, an advantage that we, that we offer. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> So the Leadership um, Certificate of Advanced Studies that SAFO is um, organizing with the ZHW is still quite a recent offer. It has been, so the pilot is over. So the, the good thing is we could really see what worked and what worked a little bit less and could improve on that. So there are no more guinea pigs. <laughs> and um, what happened, uh, and there happened to be apart from really the interact, it's a, it's a hands-on training. It's with experts from these different topics that I mentioned. It's very hands-on, um, with, li of course, little theoretical inputs, but then it's a lot of uh, practice, exchange on, on what works, what has worked, what are options, what are different possibilities. And, um, yeah, maybe also what is the juicy part. If it happened to be really what, what, what students found really nice was uh, the intuition. They organized themselves um, in between self-organized learning that uh, was introduced in the beginning and that worked very well. And uh, really students learned a lot from each other, from the experiences from each other. And then there's maybe another part which is special that we have um, um, uh, in between every student really benefits from a career counseling, so now with that um, training, where could I go, how can I integrate it with my former experiences and what could be next part is. Okay, thank you very much for the juicy parts and bits that we got to hear. Now uh, the platform is open if you have uh, questions or remarks or anything that would you like to the, that you would like to ask now it's your moment I will take two or three questions and then we will answer two or three questions so we see a bit how it works Andrea as well has a microphone so if you raise your hand she knows where to go um, Good morning I just had two questions for the department on gender and for the Zeta HW um, what are the exactly specific requirements for entry? You said that you have to be a professional, but you could you both specify be more on the particularities of these requirements. Thank you. Okay. Is there any other question right now? Otherwise, I think we'll let the people answer who are being asked. Okay. Um, the question on the requirements, as I said, it's a certificate of advanced studies, the same also with the course from Sanfo and Zetave. This means you need to have a university degree. So you need to have finished your master's and you also need to have some, some professional experience. This means from one year to 20, 30 year. It depends. It's more interesting if you have a bit more professional experience. What we also do, we accept people sur dossier, it's called, which means people with a certain portfolio who have done a lot in their life, who maybe have a bachelor in social work, but a lot of work experience. We look at the dossier very closely and we, it's also possible that we accept them. Well, I think I have nothing to add as to this because it's a, as it is a certified CIS, it's the same requirements and it's exactly what you explained to it. Thank you. Okay, are there any other questions or remarks? Is it in English, the course? Yeah, the language, the language of the courses. Oh. 
We are re yeah, we are thinking on uh, maybe a next time whether it uh, would uh, uh, would really be in in in, uh, in English. I'll but it's definitely not about changing it into German. <laughs> okay, we should talk about it. And the other thing is also, I mean, Safa otherwise has some has uh, some really smaller training offers, and most of them they are online, which is interesting also because we really want to reach out to people who are in the field or uh, abroad. And uh, we off most a lot of our trainings are um, are webinars or um, different form of webinars, shorter, longer, facilitated with coachings and so on. And there is also uh, maybe this is also going in that direction. Um, our master of advanced studies is in German. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. And also just a, quest a question about the entry requirements for the NADEL. Um, it's also to have a university master's degree, I guess, to be adm admitted to do the mass Yes. Is it on? No. Yeah. no. <laughs> is it on? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. Um, officially, yes, but a bit like uh, Florina said, there's also this a dossier thing that um, if we have someone with a really, really interesting, diversified background, uh, then we do make exceptions, but don't spread the word. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. There's another one, Andrea's question. I just wanted to ask from Mr. Zafran from the Graduate Institute, if the programs are mainly like full-time or part-time for the people that are also working, could they be able to attend? Thank you. Yeah. Yes, so thank you for your question. Um, so the regular uh, master's and PhD programs are full-time. Um, it's part of the regular sort of cycle of study, but executive education, um, especially the program where I mentioned the executive master in development policies and practices, is a program that is designed for professionals who are on the job. Um, the program has existed for nearly 15 years. It used to have a different form, and we realized after a few years that a lot of professionals who took that program had to quit their job because it was so you know, intense. So we, we reformatted the, the program so that people, so participants do not have to quit their job. So there's an intense module um, uh, in, in August uh, that is usually a month where it's easier to take off work. Then there's an e-learning period, uh, where, where uh, well, e-learning module, where participants can stay, can work from home and continue working in their organization. And then there's three weeks uh, intense in Geneva. So it's, it's modulable uh, around your, your work schedule. Uh, happy to discuss this uh, afterwards. If you <laughs> okay. Any other questions in the room? Yes. Thank you. Uh, for Mr. Dominic, I wanted to ask what are the advantages your program would give the individuals after they finish? The ad opportunities, what opportunities do it opens? Okay, well, it's, is it on? Yes, yes. okay. Um, as a University of Applied Sciences, a number of our students, when they complete the bachelor, they do not want to do a master. They want to, to go and work. And actually, it works for them. Most of them find a job even without having a master. But the, the work is mostly in Switzerland because there is a, a labor market for those agronomists who have the bachelor level. Then, if you go into the master program, then you, you are qual more qualified for the international um, labor uh, world. So there's more opportunities to work abroad w with a master's than with a bachelor. That's why we encourage our students who want to work abroad to do a master before they apply for jobs. So this is uh, the, the situation. Now, among the students who are doing the Bachelor in International Agriculture, we celebrated 20 years of, that, of those studies two years ago. So we had over about 200 and something students, half of them are working in Switzerland. And among the other half, about 40% work 
abroad and the, the remaining 10%, they work in Switzerland, but in connection with development projects or development cooperation. And for those who work abroad, it's not all in development cooperation. Some work on farms or on in, in enterprises in the private sector, so it's not purely development cooperation. There are all ranges of jobs. Very good. Um, any other? Hand? Maybe just one remark on, on that, because of, uh, for um, programs for to enter international cooperation, that is, for example, SDC offering or the UN offering, uh, um, they re all require a master's. I mean, it's really important to know. It's it's very difficult to get in in these programs without a master. Great. Is there any other question? Yes. Thank you. Um, a question to the Nederlander Havel. Uh, the field experiment is it uh, connected to specific countries, or can you choose? Well, we, we do have a list of partners, of regular partners, and the most frequent partner we had over the 22 years uh, since it exists is Helvetas. He, this was our key partner. So that means it's connected to the countries where they are active. But there were exceptions. We had a student, he said, oh, I want to make my, my field assignment in Chile. So we found a job in Chile for him. And one went to, to Brazil because he really wanted to do it in Brazil. So it's not a, a limited list. If you have good reasons to go in a specific country, then this would be, uh, this is possible. Now in the master's program, we have a number of students from foreign origin. So people from Latin America who do the master in Zolikov. And so mostly they would do their master thesis then in their home country. So that connection from their origin is also uh, taken into account. We don't send them anywhere, we send them where they want to go. Okay, so um, in the case of our Mass of Advanced Studies, it works a bit differently. Uh, those 24 people who have been accepted do fill out a form where they say, where they write down where would you li like to go, which region, and especially what kind of task would they like to take because due to the background they have. And these uh, personal data we send to different partner organizations, also to Helveta, so Swiss Hope Contact, many of them have a booth up there, and they submit proposals, right? So they would submit a proposal to you, re looking at your sheet, so I don't know your background, but let's say Helvetas would say, we would like to have this lady in Bolivia, for our program regarding um, irrigation, and she has good knowledge in, uh, in Spanish, and that's why I would like to have her. And you would get several offers from different organizations, and it would be up to you to make a wise decision. <laughs> and as I said, um, the project assignments can take place in different countries, the ones mentioned, Asia, Latin America, Africa, but more and more the Balkans and also Central Asia. If I can just add, the, the service is also organized by Huffle, so it's not the students looking themselves for places. We have some a person who is responsible for that, and she's doing all the contacts with the organizations, and she's also providing a list uh, with topics and countries, and then we try to match the students and the, and the places we have. Thank you very much for these replies. So there is time for a very brief last question, if there is one. If there is none right now, I would say you have heard peop some people, most of the people have a stand up there. Florina is here for those who uh, are interested in that. And you will also be part, Florina, in the afternoon session no? at 2.30. So she is around more or less the whole day. You will find her if you need her. And otherwise, I would like to, uh, you would like to say something. So, and the others have booths up there? Yeah, the others have, uh, well, basically the other four have booths, or five, including Sappho with uh, the CEAS 
Lisa just in introduced. So go upstairs or find Florina and um, a hearty thank you for, uh, for the group of people who took their time to come and to present and uh, to be available to you. Thank you very much. <laughs>